Okay, so now we are moving to the fifth week and fifth module and in the fourth module basically we talked about how to capture codify knowledge and what will the process of system okay. and then we also talked about the knowledge architecture and how we are going to have a good knowledge management team so that it is going to be effective. In the same con uh, continuation now what we are going to discuss is uh, that how we create a blueprint for the knowledge management system and then what are the different technicalities involved in it. Okay. I will try to explain it as uh, in as simple words as possible and then uh, the third part of this uh, week is that how to develop a prototype and go for deployment of the system. Right. So, we start with uh, the designing a knowledge management blueprint and the various things that we are likely to cover here is that how to develop a architecture for the knowledge management. We also look into the various components okay. and then we have to see that it has a high level of interpolar ability. We also look into that this system that is designed okay, is meant for performance and it is scalable it means that suppose the number of users go up then it is possible to use the similar systems. right? Then we have to look into the repositories because the repositories are uh, the place where the knowledge content is kept. So, we have to look at it from the life cycle management perspectives because the repositories grow old over a period of time. There are issues related to repositories, what kind of knowledge to be put in, what kind of knowledge should not be put in. Then we will see look into the, the requisites which is important for user interfaces okay. and then where it is going to be positioned so far as KM is concerned and then you have to see whether you are going to buy or build in. Okay. So, you have to go for a trade off so far as architecture is concerned that whether you are going to have a architecture that is to be built in within the organization or you want to have a architecture that is to be outsourced from experts or other places. right? And then how we can uh, develop a good knowledge management system okay, which is scalable which can be used in the future okay, and uh, which cannot be say penetrated into by hackers okay, or with uh, virus attacks are not there. So, these are the various issues of the architecture which we are likely to cover in the next two uh, half an hour lectures. right? So, we start with knowledge management blueprint, what knowledge management blueprint is. See basically it is a road map okay. and you know what a road map is, road map tells you that okay, from this place how are we going to reach to another place okay. and then it also tells you that how to reach there. right? So, it is a road map for building and incrementally providing a KM system. Okay. So, it is a red road map which tells you that how are we going to develop a knowledge management system. So, it provides you a guideline okay, that what kind of knowledge management system is to build and then how do you build a knowledge management system. So, a blueprint is basically nothing else, but it is a kind of you can say a final prototype okay, because everything that is there in the final prototype, prototype would be included in a knowledge management system. Okay. So, if you look the architecture of a knowledge management system, you would be able to understand what how the system works, what are the different components of the systems okay, and then how it works. It is like a building. So, you have for a building you have an architecture. So, it is like a building architecture which gives you an idea about the kind of building it is. So, similarly a knowledge management architecture will give you an idea about the kind of knowledge management system that is being developed. right? So, when you are going to develop a knowledge management system, so you have to see that how it is going to help companies grow and develop. right? If you are going to develop a knowledge management system which is not good, probably you are going to lose opportunities. Okay? So, here we are trying to analyze that how we can basically get opportunities or how we can look into or exploit those opportunities which are likely to be lost. Right? If you are going to explicate in the wrong type of knowledge in the system, then what will happen? Okay? Then you cannot explicate or come out with right kind of knowledge, uh, especially it is true with the explicit knowledge, right? not the tacit knowledge. right? So, explicit knowledge is what? The declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge, right? these are explicit knowledge. right? 
and other knowledge other kind of knowledge is non -ex explicit like tacit knowledge and these kind of things right now if you look at uh, this quadrant it talks about that how you can uh, leverage knowledge provided it is explicit right so if it is explicit is explicit explicit it can be provided and that is where you get better leverage from the knowledge right because the knowledge is explicated right now if you look at this part okay you are going to lose opportunity because uh, you are not able to uh, exploit expl uh, uh, an ex ex explicit knowledge right because it is available in the tacit form here also so this is a major area of concern that is where you are going to build the km system here again there is not a problem because that is uh, uh, you have explicit knowledge that can be used but the only thing is that if the knowledge that has been explicit if it is not correct or it is wrongly interpreted then you cannot have any leverage okay so this is the best thing uh, but for that here you have to see that how the tacit knowledge is transferred to explicit knowledge right so the knowledge that is explicit shared and distributed and applies but never articulated represents a last opportunity so when i'm talking about last opportunity here you are losing the opportunity okay because you are not going to leverage this particular asset okay now, if you look at this shaded box, what does it tell? It takes, talks about the correct positioning of a KM system, because here you have been able to transform tacit into explicit oh, and, not, and the, it is the right kind of knowledge which is going to help you, right. So, you need to ensure that you are not going to lose opportunities, because you are not able to exploit the existing knowledge, whether it is available in explicit form or tacit form, right. So, what you need to do is that you need to ensure that tacit knowledge is transformed into explicit and the kind of explicit knowledge that is available to you is the right kind of knowledge right now based on this back, uh, argument we are going to see that what kind of km architecture should be there right you remember we already talked about the role of it in the system so it it system actually helps you to share application uh, share uh, apply uh, validate and distribute explicit knowledge See, IT does not help you to share or apply tacit knowledge, okay, because it is personalized, okay, it is person to person based. But when it comes to explicit knowledge, that is where IT plays a very important role. So, it is important to ensure that whatever knowledge is available, okay, you are going to make it explicit. So, those companies which are not able to transform the tacit knowledge into explicit knowledge, okay, they will not be able to make use of IT to share or distribute explicit knowledge, because it is not available in explicit forms. right? But if you are going to use IT systems to share tacit knowledge, then it does not provide you any leverage, because tacit knowledge is person to person based. right? It can come out with uh, using communities of practices, uh, teams, collab collaborations okay? and creating a knowledge sharing culture, where person are going to share their knowledge with the other person. But if, and it IT does not help there. So, we have to see that what is the role of IT in the system? IT basically provides a leverage specifically for explicit knowledge, right. So, make sure that uh, IT becomes an enabler in the KM architecture, not a complete solution, because it does not talk about tacit knowledge, right. Then moving to other issues, see when you are going to design uh, KM blueprint, okay. Now, if you look at see these are the different units of the organization and they are going to coordinate their activities okay and use each unit see if you look at the shadows shadows sorry arrows that is coming out or coming it it means that they are going to share their knowledge right and this is the knowledge management center okay where you come out with the usable ideas so if you look at that yes the ideas are coming from different sources it is coming and it is going to different units also. Okay. So, the idea gets refined in the process that you have ideas here, then you have ideas here, then you have ideas here and once it is filtered and refined, then you come out with certain ideas which could be useful and these usable ideas help you to provide a solution. right? So, in order to reach to this useful idea, the ideas that is coming from different sources has to be evaluated okay, and filtered, so that you come out with something that is going to be useful. Now, if you look at this, you can very very clearly see that when you are going to design a KM blueprint, make sure that the flow of idea is good okay, and people are ready to share their knowledge and it is available in explicit form. So, idea is coming here, 
then it is it, it could be further translated and refined means what that this is this at may be at this place it is available in that acid form, but as you move up it is codified and refined and then it is going to be available in explicit form, because unless ideas are available in explicit form after refinement then you, you can use it otherwise it cannot be used. So, it is very very important that different uh, parts of the organization who share information and knowledge okay, which is available in tacit form it is to be transferred into explicit form. Now, what are the different kind of uh, different components of a knowledge management system? Now, if you look at the different components of the knowledge management system, these there are several components okay. and the four major components are repositories, then you have collaborative platforms, then you have networks and finally, we will discuss about the role or importance of the culture. Now, let us talk about repositories. Repositories are what? Repositories are nothing else. It is like containers, different kind of containers, various shapes and sizes of containers, which fold or uh, which hold knowledge either in the form of explicit or tacit, right. But these uh, containers which hold knowledge either in a formal or informal way, okay. Then you have to see that how, how this uh, uh, knowledge is being kept into these uh, repositories okay, and whether they go through this process of refining, managing and validation and maintaining and then annotating and you are going to add context to it okay, and then how this is going to be distributed. So, if you look at repositories which these are nothing else, but knowledge hubs okay, and in order to store and retrieval IT is going to be a ma major enabler in the process right, but whatever is being stored into these uh, knowledge hub, uh, knowledge centers or repositories okay, has to be ensured that it is refined, refined in the sense that the raw knowledge may not be useful. So, it is more meaningful and interpretable. Okay. It is managed using an IT system, it is validated because uh, people are able to make use of it, it is maintained by the IT system and then ex, uh, knowledge developers are able to add context to it that in what way it can be used, where it can be used and that is how you are going to add context and then you should have a good, good interface. So, that you are able to distribute the content to the relevant person for the job. Okay. So, that is about repositories, then you have to have collaborative platforms. Okay. So, you go for distributed work and uh, pointers, you have a skill databases, LO bases, directories, expert locators okay, and communication channels through which you are going to collaborate to put things or knowledge element into the repositories. We will discuss these uh, factors further. Then you have networks, networks basically provide you the support in terms of communication and conversion. Okay. It may include your hardware, software, your intranet okay, and these kind of things okay, uh, through which you are connected through your uh, networks, collaborators, okay, vendors and through which you are going to exchange information and knowledge. And then you need to develop a very collaborative culture okay, uh, so that people are encouraged and motivated to share their knowledge and also related to the use of it. Okay, so, now after discussing about the various component of the system, let us talk about them one by one. Okay. So, the first one is knowledge repository. So, we need to differentiate between a knowledge repository and information repositories. Okay. In what way it is different? A knowledge repository has a context added to it, while an information repository does not have a context, context related to added to it. Right. For example, a knowledge repository and an information repository can be divided into two categories right. Say for example, we have uh, a number of students in the class okay, who have passed out year wise. Okay. Now, if this data is there and uh, the number of placements that is available year wise. Okay. Now, the number of students who passed out or the number of placements this information is available in the repository. So, this is a information repository. Now, how it becomes a knowledge repository? Okay. Once context is added to that, how we are going to add context? So, that it becomes relevant because this is not a very useful knowledge, though it provides you some meaning, some sense okay, that you can say okay, you are going to organize this. Okay. The number of uh, place percentage of placement is 80 percent, 90 percent that you can calculate by looking at the 
number of pass outs and number of placement offers that is received by these pass outs right right but how are going to add context to this it is possible only when you say okay what is the quality of the placement who are what are the good companies which is uh, taking these students okay what kind of students are being placed okay what kind of cv, CV should be there for better placement so you are adding context to this because it is going to help you to take certain decisions maybe for future that those who are going to pass out they should apply for these kinds of companies which offer bet better packages which offer better working opportunities so that is how we are going to take certain decisions so this kind of knowledge if it is going to relevant for decision making for next year placement then it becomes a knowledge it from your that is how you are converting this knowledge in uh, sorry information into a knowledge and that is how you can differentiate a knowledge repository from a cons uh, information repository okay a knowledge repository you can have different kind of platforms right which each one will have a structure okay depending upon the kind of knowledge that you want to have it okay uh, so uh, let us see what are the different kind of structure for knowledge repositories see these are the different repositories repository x y z and this these all these repositories may be having different kind of content right and this is a composite repository from where you have distributed them into different kind of them and each one of them belong to a specific set of knowledge base right repository y will uh, may belong to one set of data or one set of information this may be related to another set and that is uh, and this repository composite re repository is connected through the networks ok and this is also connected through the remote repository so that that is how the information accumulates into the this process so you have different repositories and then you have combined repositories like they could be different servers and this is a network server through which they are connected and that is how you are going to have repositories okay. and that is how it is connected to repositories which are not very close or may be outside the organization as well right. So, what kind of knowledge content is created by the these repositories if you look at this th there could be three different kind of repositories sorry knowledge that could be created declarative procedural and causal declarative which is very very important okay like significant and meaningful concepts what it is how it works what is the definitions various assumptions related to theory and this kind of thing which is well known so this is the explicit knowledge then procedures procedures basically talks about processes how certain things are done like you have manuals guidelines okay so these are related to procedural knowledge right processes sequence of events and activities and actions that is to be taken suppose you have uh, certain activities is to be done ok and uh, there is a failure ok. Then what kind of actions to be taken? So, there are certain fixed processes the standard operating processes that is to be adopted in order to uh, uh, remove the failures right. So, this is related to procedural knowledge then coming to no causal knowledge ok. Call causal knowledge is uh, different in the sense that talks about the cause effect relationship ok if this has happened if this breakdown has happened then this could be the reason and that is how you relate cause with the effect ok and that provides you a rational for taking certain decisions ok or not taking certain decisions or then it provides you certain alternatives ok ok that what is to be done in a particular course of action ok, okay. and then you get certain informational pieces ok that this is what needs to be done then you get get it uh, collectively from the group or the individuals and then you try to relate it ok. So, causal may not be perfectly causal because there could be correlational aspects where you can relate certain things with the co uh, cause right. So, and then finally, the most important thing that you are going to add to the knowledge repository that it must have a context ok that suppose you will take a particular decision suppose you are going to hire a person ok as a software engineer right. Then you look into the requirement of the job look into the qualification of the person you try to match it. Okay. and there is a fixed process that you follow okay. that is what we call procedural knowledge. Now, but this procedural knowledge may not help you to select the right candidate okay. then you have to add a context that is under what circumstances you are going to select a particular candidate suppose there are 5 people who are equally good. Okay. So, you are going to take certain assumptions what about the circumstances of the work then you are going to add certain other dimensions. Okay whether the candidate is going to be selected will be able to work as a team whether it will be compatible. So, you are going to look into other things and then 
you are going to gather this information from other sources, okay, which you are going to add to the decision when it comes to selecting a candidate. right? So, this is what provides you a context. Now, moving from context further, okay, we also need to discuss that if you are going to have uh, integrative repositories, then what happens? Okay. Integrative repositories means you have a composite repositories. right? So, what are the uh, hazards or liabilities of having this kind of repositories? Right? If you, uh, it is a good idea have to have uh, a composite uh, repositories or integrative repositories, but it may not be good for certain regions, right? because everything comes to one place. Okay. And then what happens? There could be information overload. Okay. In what way it is going to be there? Because each knowledge that is to be put into the content or the repositories has to be validated. Okay. So, since the nature of knowledge in ev is evolving, you cannot say that this knowledge is going to be useful tomorrow. Okay. So, each content in the repository has a clear validation or expiration mechanism. Right. So, if you are not going to take it out, that knowledge which is not relevant which is obsolete or outdated, then it will also be there in the repositories and then extracting the kind of knowledge that you require may not be good or may not be appropriate for the users. right? So, it is very very important to examine that what kind of knowledge is being kept in the repositories, okay? because you, we uh, this uh, follow this principles of garbage in and garbage out. So, what you are going to put in and what you are going to put out. So, there must be specific criteria to decide what you are going to put in and what you are going to put out. right? For example, uh, um, we have taken uh, a case where a company called Arthur Anderson Consulting Group, okay. they have uh, actually a knowledge architecture that is known as knowledge space, it is a trademark okay. and they basically extensively use lotus note based repositories. What actually happens that all the discussion that used to happen okay, related to generation idea or knowledge creation was kept in there. Then what happened? The repositories had grown up to such an extent in a short time frame that it become very difficult to store and maintain or manage this. Okay. At the same time, many of the things that were there become redundant because you know that nature of technology especially related to the computers and other things keep on changing very fast. Okay, because the life cycle is very, very short. So, in that case what happens? Many of the things that discussions that were put in the net databases become redundant. right? So, it is very, very important to understand the hazards and liabilities of having integrative repositories and also need to ensure that what needs to be kept in and what needs to be kept out. Okay? And then has to be a fixed criteria to decide what kind of knowledge is how sorry how to validate the knowledge and what kind of knowledge should be taken out from the repositories. So, that you can reduce the problem of information overload. Now, coming to the content centers, okay. these are the knowledge hubs basically. So, if you are going to integrate multifunction department specific repositories, then it uh, into one central repositories, okay. then you have to see that what are the various content centers okay, which need to be integrated together. Right. For example, in, uh, in ERP system, we have different content centers. Okay. For example, we have content related to student, related to the hostel management, related to the accounts, related to the HR of the staff. So, these contents are uh, there and then there is a need for integrating these contents together. right? So, in an organizational context, there could be various departments. So, you can create knowledge or have content centers separately related to various departments and then you go for integrating them. So, that you have a okay. Uh, integrated repositories. For example, a content center may have uh, contents specific contents or knowledge contents related to production department or the customer departments or market intelligence or HR departments or administration, sales and marketing, finance or your external stakeholders like partners and suppliers. So, for each one of them you have built separate system and then you see that how you can integrate these together. Uh, the basic objective of integrating these systems together is to ensure that all of them are integrated in such a way, so that this uh, 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 duplication efforts are reduced and at the same time the relevant knowledge goes to the relevant person. right? Not all the knowledge goes to all the, all the person. 
these are some of the checklists that can be used for having integrated uh, repositories. Okay. You have to see that what is there, right? You especially for your competitors and for yourself. Okay. And the competitive knowledge is coming from where? Maybe from public, trade and professional organizations, investors and the government organizations, right? So, and the extent to which you are going to put them into the system, right? Like newspaper articles, okay, search firms, consumer goods, state publications. So, the knowledge is coming from different sources. So, what you can do? You can make one repository that is to be used by the public, the employees, other by the trade professional organizations, the other from, other from the government and those, those who deal with the government organizations, right, or the investors, okay. And then see you have to also need to see that how it is going to be done, right. And what our competition is talking about themselves, okay, and what you are going to talk about your uh, competition, and accordingly you see that when you are going to develop your content center, make it relevant, so that and integrate it so that it could be used, right. Now another issue that is related to this is open and distributed system. When I'm talking about open and distributed system, means that you have to see that in open system, what happens? Whenever you want any information, you can have access to it, right? It's an open system. So you log in using your password, you get this information from the KM system, right? And then you follow standard protocols, like you have uh, using internet, you have HTML, TCP/IP protocols, okay, which help you to implement the KM system very quickly, and you can extend it to the future also, and customize it depending upon the requirement of the users. Now you have to see that this open system is also distributed. It means this is going to be distributed across various platforms, devices, servers and locations. For example, we have an integrated ERP system, but we have nodes, okay, ahoots, which are available in different departments, different centers and they are connected it. Okay. So, that game system is useful for not only with uh, accessing data from the open system, but could be accessed from anywhere using any kind of platform or servers. right? Then moving to the third part that is aggregation and data mining, right. For example, the knowledge is aggregated in one, in one place in the knowledge repository, but it is very structured, codified and classified, right. So, you have softwares which help you to search the data, right. For example, you have Microsoft, you have Google, Google's other search engines, okay. And if you type a particular keyword, what happens? It generates lot of resources, information. So, this is not be very, very useful. Okay. If you are going for mining data that could when that is going to be relevant and useful, you need to develop a KM system which can cluster relevant information from the search engine which could be relevant for you, right. So, you can go for uh, having this specified content categories okay, depending upon the domain and the knowledge area which you are looking forward to, right that kind of knowledge management architecture is better. Okay. You can also have skill databases and knowledge directories okay. that uh, actually if you look at skill databases, it helps to basically see that uh, you can get what uh, expert uh, the rel uh, related uh, relevant information okay, without any boundaries. Okay. It is very, very useful where you have information about the experts, subject matter experts especially or uh, domain experts. Okay like for example, Microsoft updates this kind of databases where you can get it. Then you can also have a knowledge directory like yellow pages and these kind of things. Okay. Where the idea is to have these uh, skill databases and moving it further one step where you also have detailed uh, ex uh, things related to the expertise like the skill base, the experiences, what they know okay, and how they can contribute to these kind of things within the knowledge management system. So, I mean skills databases and knowledge directories could be part of the knowledge architecture or knowledge based system. Then you also have a provision for automated categorization in the knowledge management architecture make sure that it is not done manually, but you have a automated system. So, that whatever is being contributed is being codified and put to a context, right. So, and it has information related to what the context in which it was applied what is the source of information, okay, from where it has come okay. and once you have codified and classified information in the KM system, make sure that it is done automatically or you have a procedure or system 
where you are not going to do this kind of thing manually. Okay. One example that I can give is like grape wine. Okay. It is a tool which helps you to do this kind of categorization, which helps you to go for automation of context. right? And if context is available, you can even track certain metadata to this one. Then you can go for personalized content filtering and push delivery also. right? Personalized uh, content filtering is nothing else that how the process of categorization takes place. Okay. Like whether it is audio, whether it is a video, whether it is a text or images. Okay. For example, if when you go for Google search, you know that you go for personalized content filtering, you can search images, you can search videos, okay, or you can listen the things, okay, or you can hype the text version also. Okay. So, that is one way to look at it, okay. And then you have a user profile basically that defines context that content and defines the content type. So, uh, that basically helps you to get the relevant content okay. and then you have a collaborative platform. Collab collaborative platform is nothing else, but that is how the explicit knowledge and context actually is flowed okay, using a particular medium. Now, uh, you have to provide a surrogate channel for defining, storing, moving or linking digital objects like conversion traits. Uh, that corresponding to knowledge gen. So, you need to have a medium through which and that is basically the technology okay, which helps you. Okay. So, it enables the content of KM system with high degree of flexibility to make it meaningful, useful and, uh, and applicable across possible contexts. and sometimes you know it is abused also when you are going for uh, violating certain copyright rules and these kind of things, okay. but it empowers the users to make use of things as and when they want using this medium. right? So, you can search for the content or you can even subscribe to the content, so that you can get it on a regular basis. right? Thank you.